so let's talk about bone pathology now. First bone pathology is achondroplasia. And this is due to overactive fibroblast growth factor receptor 3, FGFR3. That's a key term that you want to know. Okay, And what FGFR3 does is it inhibits chondrocyte proliferation at the growth plate. Remember there were two types of bone um, formation. Remember which one was involved with needs a cartilage model? Remember that's the endochondral ossification. Remember the chondral, that's how you remember. Remember what parts of the body needs endochondral ossification? It's pretty much the, all of the body except for the head and the, the um, clavicle and the yeah, facial bones. So you're going to get short limbs. And note that a membranous ossification is unaffected. So your head's going to grow perfectly fine, but your limbs are not, so you're going to have, have a head relatively larger than your limbs. Note that achondro, so basically you're going to have someone short, um, and you're going to get dwarfism. This is the most common cause of dwarfism. This is not dwarfism, it is a cause of dwarfism, which is basically being short. Um, note that this is, it's, it can be genetic, it's autosomal dominant, but that's only in 20% of patients. Uh, the rest of the people have new sporadic mutations, and usually it's, the risk is with increased paternal age. Other thing I want to note, and sometimes they can trick you on these tests, is that these patients have normal intelligence, fertility, and lifespan. All you have to do is rem just remember Tyrion Lannister. Uh, that dude is very smart, he's very fertile. And I don't know about his lifespan. He has normal, these guys will have normal intelligence, normal fertility, and normal lifespan. They're just short. That's the only thing. So the next one is osteogenesis imperfecta. And what goes wrong here is that patients have defective type 1 collagen synthesis. Remember again, what was type 1 collagen used for? Remember it was type 1. Type 1 is for bone. This is autosomal dominant, and thus you're going to have weak bones. Um, the way this presents, then, if you have weak bones, obviously, is you're going to have recurrent fractures after minimal trauma, and this can be often confused for child abuse. You're going to have blue sclera, as you can see in this picture. This is a classic picture that you'll see a lot of times on the test, and that's going to be an instant answer osteogenesis imperfecta. And that's because you have a thin sclera, so your underlying veins, your blue veins, are going to shine through. And then you're gonna, you can have hearing loss because you have all these little tiny little bones in the middle ear that will fracture easily um, because of that poor type 1 collagen synthesis. And then you're going to get hearing loss. Um, next piece of pathology is osteoporosis, uh, which we brought up before. And what is going wrong here, which I've bolded to highlight it, is the decreased bone density and strength leading to increased susceptibility for fracture. Um, this is most commonly due to increased bone resorption with age or decreased estrogen levels, hence why older women are most susceptible. Remember what? Remember how estrogen works? Remember estrogen uh, basically uh, helps osteoblasts live, um, helps osteoblasts die, osteoclasts die. So if you lose that, you can get um, poor bone formation and remember age so this graph tells you a lot so this graph shows you how your bone density bone mass goes up with a as, as you're younger and you reach a peak around 30 years old and after that it's all downhill okay and if you get to around here let's say that's osteoporosis when your bone mass gets too low so just know you see that as you get older, you're more at risk, and as you, if you're female, you're more at risk because you have, I just have overall lower bone mass, and a couple other risk factors are alcohol, steroid use, and poor calcium and vitamin D intake. Remember that. Uh, how do we get bone formation? Where we need bone mineraliza mineralization, which takes calcium and phosphate. Um, so clinical features of this are pretty simple. Um, poor bone structure leads to fractures. Um, and that's with a fragility fracture is with minimal or no trauma. You can also get, the most common ones are vertebral compression fractures um, of the vertebra in your, in your um, spinal cord, uh, around your spinal cord, I'm sorry. And to diagnose it, you usually do a DEXA scan.
and this is the key term, the key thing here. You, what you have is with the DEXA scan, it's going to show you your bone density in comparison to a uh, young adult woman. That's the comparison. So you're put if you have a bone density 2.5 standard deviations or more below the mean bone marrow density of a standard of a young adult woman, then you are defined as having osteoporosis. And this 2.5 is actually really important. I don't know. I, I felt like it was difficult to remember that. I was like, was it three times? Was it three more lower? Two lower? It's 2.5. It's not three. It's not two. It's 2.5. Remember that. Just burn that in your mind. It's 2.5 for osteoporosis. 2.5 T-score standard deviation. So T-score is important too. The other way you can diagnose it is if the patient has a fragility fracture, which we just talked about. Remember, that was a fracture with minimal or no trauma. Uh, another note is that you we recommend a one-time DEXA screen for women over the 65. Again, remember, older women are at risk. And the other thing is that all labs are normal. Remember, it's just the patient only has uh, decreased bone mass, but their labs are normal. So their calcium levels are normal, parathyroid hormones are normal, um, blah, blah, blah. How do we prevent this? Well, one way we can prevent this is by encouraging weight-bearing exercise. And that will help increase your bone density. And the other thing is to have appropriate intake of calcium and vitamin D. You don't need a lot, you just need enough, sufficient for good bone mineralization. That's how you prevent osteoporosis. Um, finally, treatments. There's multiple treatments. First line will be bisphosphonates. Uh, well, thing to note for bisphosphonates is that it uh, mechanism of action is to inhibit osteoclast and bone resorption. And do you know the? Do you remember the side effects of it? Side effects is that you can actually get esophagitis, so inflammation of, um, of your esophagus, and you can get jaw necro osteonecrosis, so you can actually mess up your jaws by taking this. That's kind of scary. Next is teriparatide. This is a PTH analog. Remember how PTH had, you can actually be anabolic as well, and that was if it was given with intermittent pulses. So that's what you can do with teriparatide. You can give it a pulsatile fraction, and you can give increased bone, um, bone building. Next is raloxifene. This is a serum. It's a selective estrogen modulator. Basically acts as an estrogen analog at specific parts of the body, including at the bone for the raloxifene. Remember, estrogen helps you build bone. Denosumab is an antibody against the rank uh, ligand. So remember what rank ligand did? Remember that's like giving cash to the osteoclast to, to activate them? So this antibody prevents rank ligand binding rank on the osteoclast, so you don't get osteoclast activation, so you have less osteoclast activity. Alright, so that's it for part one of our bone pathology.